Hey there, Mr. Reddit here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parent Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. Karen demands I buy toys for her kid too. After that, update. Entitled parents who disowned us for not having kids struck again. And after that, am I the jerk for purposefully getting pregnant while I have a roommate? Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen's coupons will expire. I'm still going to use them. So please smash that like button. And if you're new, subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. Karen demands I buy toys for her kid too. My husband, Dean, who's 29, and I, who am 26, have a wonderful daughter, Lisa, who's four. I'm a musician by trade, so my work has pretty much stopped and my husband has been working a lot the past few months. I'm basically at home all the time with Lisa and she's missing her dad a lot as she's his double and 100% a daddy's girl. Anyway, I met up with my sister, Rose, who's 32 recently, and we ended up visiting a toy store. I saw this male doll, which looked a lot like Dean, and I decided to buy it for Lisa so that she'd always have a reminder of her daddy. Rose was miffed by this and demanded I buy my niece, Flora, also for a doll. For years, Rose has been trying to basically force me to treat her daughter the same or better than my own. Here are some examples of her behavior. There's only five months difference between the girls and I've had to deal with Rose being weird about that fact for years and during my pregnancy. Lisa is my second daughter as I had a stillborn daughter in late 2014 at 20 and it broke me. Rose witnessed this and when she announced her pregnancy, she was horrible and said that she was expecting the first grandchild saying my first daughter didn't count while our parents and family said it was the second grandchild. Then when I got pregnant again, Rose was weird about it, saying I shouldn't have gotten pregnant so quickly and accused me of stealing her thunder of the new grandchild. There's been some other occasions where she just expects our kids to share everything and make everything about Flora for being the first grandchild and I've just had to put up with it. Anyway, Rose kept insisting and I just snapped and said, no, I am sick of you pushing your kid onto me and basically making my own take a back seat. I'm buying my kid a doll, literally, to make her happy because she's missing her daddy. Buy your own kid a toy. I ended up buying the toy and walking off. She went tattling to our parents, adding dramatic flair to the story, calling me a massive jerk for refusing to buy my niece a toy. My dad is on my side, saying I've had to put up with her glorifying her kid for years whilst ignoring mine, whilst my mom thinks I should give in to her. My husband says he's sick of Rose and she even brought up my other daughter again, saying she'd be ashamed of her mommy. That reduced me to tears, and I told her she's dead to me, but my mom insists I apologize to Rose. Edit, the girls weren't with us. What would you do if you had a sister like Rose? Would you give in to her? Would you try to work things out? Please let us know. Update, entitled parents who disowned us for not having kids struck again. I did not expect to be back so soon, but here we are. About a month ago, my fiance and I posted about how both of our parents decided to threaten us to be taken off their will if we did not give them grandchildren, which we won't be. Anyhow, they struck again and my fiance is really fuming with rage now and wants to share the situation with you all. There are some points that will need clarification and I'll try to make them along the way. First, as we mentioned in our last post, due to the absurdity of the situation our parents were imposing on us, we felt that we do not want them on our wedding. Thus, we rescinded their invitation as a whole. My brother is my best man and he supports us wholeheartedly. Now we get to the point of the post. After we left my parents home that day, we had absolutely zero contact with them. They made their decision and we made ours. We thought that was going to be it. Now, one thing that needs to be clarified, our wedding was planned to be happening in October 17th. However, due to everything going on right now, these large gatherings of people are completely prohibited on my region at least. But thankfully, the venue we had acquired is run by the most lovely administrators. As soon as everything started, they contacted us and gave us every assistance needed with rescheduling. Thus, we rescheduled our wedding to 2021 in the same month, as the situation is still uncertain. That can change, but shouldn't for the time being. We aren't really bothered by it, as we understand the situation is very dire and we don't mind waiting for a time where everyone will be safe, possibly. This morning while I was studying for some exams I'll be having at school, my fiance got a call from the venue administrator asking why did we want to cancel our wedding. 
Obviously, this was very strange and confusing to us. My fiancé let them know that we had no desire to cancel our wedding and further asked what that was about. Apparently, my fiancé's parents called the venue on our behalf, telling them that we no longer wanted to rent the place as we would no longer be getting married. Now, let me explain why the venue was leaning on accepting this situation. In my country, our IDs carry not only our ID and social security equivalent number, but also the name of the parents. And to rent a venue, you need to provide your ID for them as a bureaucracy requirement. I don't know if that's how it works everywhere, so I wanted to make it clear. Apparently, they wanted to take advantage of the fact and tried to dupe the venue to cancel our wedding. Luckily, the administrator is quite smart and saw that on our sheet, needed for rental, there are only two names slash numbers for contact if we can be reached. One is my brother and the other is my fiancé's best friend. At the time we booked the place, we were already in a strained relationship with our parents, so neither of us put them as a contact. Thankfully, the administrator actually paid attention to that and took the care and time to reach out to us. Otherwise, we might not only have lost our special date, but also all our deposit and dream venue. I'll be honest in saying that I never expected that kind of behavior from anyone in our families, but alas, it seems I was wrong. Anyway, now my fiance is letting out fumes and I'm trying to calm her down. We already sent a contact to her parents and mine as we are sure they are in this together for them to never try to meddle in our lives again. My brother is as angry as we are and he just told me that he was heading to their house to tear them a new one. I don't even know how to feel right now. I'm crestfallen if anything. I never expected or wanted things to be this way, but neither of us will go back on our decision of not having kids. Truth be told, I already have the papers for sterilization ready. I just hope that one day they do see that their entitlement just lost them their son and daughter, all because of grandkids that will never exist. Cheers. Edit. Thank you for all the nice replies. We really appreciate it. We just spent the whole afternoon calling all our services, making sure to create methods so this never happens again. It's taken care of and thank you all for the advice. I don't really know what my brother told them as he went from there to his work. I did get a text from them complaining that we released our rabid dog on them, which is amusing to be honest as my brother is a very calm person. We won't contact them again. Once more, thank you for all the kind words. Second edit. We did decide on passwords with all of our contracts and shouldn't have any further problems. But on that note, for those who asked, our parents didn't give us a dime to pay for our wedding. We worked ourselves and paid for every little thing. They have absolutely no right over it. I did mention this on the previous post. We don't want their money, neither do we need it. We're just sharing and venting our frustration. Anyway, thank you all for the lovely replies and awards. Cheers. What would you do if your parents tried to cancel your wedding? Please let us know. I had canceled them. Am I the jerk for purposefully getting pregnant while I have a roommate? So, there's me, 27 female, my boyfriend, 30 male, and my friend, 23 female. Let's call her Becca. Well, my boyfriend and I had been discussing the possibility of starting a family for about six months before the you know what started. When our state went into lockdown, Becca went from full-time employment to part-time and could no longer afford her apartment on her own. So she asked if she could move in with us for a while until she could figure out what to do about her money situation. My boyfriend and I talked it over and both agreed that we wanted to help her out because she's a good friend and we didn't want to see her go into unnecessary debt or worse, have an eviction on her record if the worst case scenario happened. I warned her about the fact that my boyfriend and I were talking about having a baby though and that our decision wouldn't be hindered by our new living arrangement. She has a room to herself. We have a two bedroom apartment. She wasn't thrilled about this, but agreed because it was her best option. Well, we finally decided in July that we're both officially ready to have a baby. And somehow we got lucky because I just found out last week that I'm pregnant. I'm so excited and I couldn't wait to talk to Becca about it. I know it's early to tell people, but she is currently our roommate and it'll be a change for her too. And oh man, was that a mistake. She was upset when I told her. She basically said that she's still really stressed and struggling because of her job situation and now is working two jobs, which means that she gets very little time to sleep or relax and she doesn't want to live with a baby on top of everything else. I told her I'm very sorry that she's stressed and I know her situation sucks, but I warned her about this from day one. I understand that I could have told her when we started trying, but a lot of people are grossed out by that now and it's not like she didn't know about our plans. 
Plus, it's my apartment and my life. I don't feel like I should have to put off my own life because I'm helping out a friend. So, am I the jerk for purposefully getting pregnant while I have a roommate? Well, what do you think? Should OP have changed her plans now that Becca lives with her or not? Please let us know. I think she needs to kick Becca out, to be honest. Don't think I'm worth the money? Kiss your income goodbye. So I was living in a town where there was an old hotel that was in the process of being converted to apartments, ended up moving in, and at some point started to help the owner, let's call him Steve, out with a lot of stuff. Started with little odd jobs here and there, helping tear out a wall or take debris out. No big deal really, made a few extra bucks. Being a geek, it didn't take long to start ending up helping handle some other stuff. They had internet access available, but it was using HPNA, so basically in-home DSL, over lines in a 50-year-old building. They slowly were adding more people here and there, so adding more capacity ended up being my job as well as handling the installs and troubleshooting. Building had its own cable system as well, and it had issues with some stuff overheating. Came up with a design that would simplify the build-out somewhat and remove the issue of overheating boxes as well as adding more room for channels to be added and creating a type of scrolling TV guide channel using Titan and an auto-scroll plugin in the browser, then piping it onto a channel and adding some music. Before long, I was handling most of the maintenance for all of the apartments, internet, cable, lockouts, and whatever else might be needed. Then Steve's stepdaughter moved in and things started to happen that were fishy. My information being removed as the lockout number among other things. So I gracefully moved on and got out of the way as I didn't want to be in the middle of family. I also had no hard feelings for Steve over what the daughter or her husband was doing. I still got calls with questions and would answer them here and there. About six months after moving out, I got a call that Steve needed help as the boiler system was acting up and basically the building did not have heat. I went down and helped get things tore apart since the daughter's husband couldn't be bothered. He moved out of a house because he didn't want to take care of things, even though the wife did most of it. Ended up, the fins on the boiler had clogged up with soot during startups over a few years. We cleaned it all out and got it up and running. Owner had another project he wanted some help with, so rather than turn down some extra cash, I figured why not? We ran a small water line from the top of multiple plumbing shafts to the basements so that a set of valves could be put into place so the recirculation pump would be able to evenly get water through the lines and everyone would have instant hot water. Ended up moving back to the area a couple months later as I started helping Steve with an even larger building nearby. The old hotel, converted to apartments, was 10 stories tall, so not small, but didn't need a lot done most of the time. The new place was not as tall, but was larger and more spread out. One section had three floors and the whole thing set on something nearly the size of a city block. I think total square footage was around 50k inside. I was taking care of the apartment maintenance needs and a few other things again as well as staying in the building with my wife who was acting as a lookout in the evenings. During the day I would help out with whatever was going on. We literally reworked a lot of structural steel, reclad one section of the building with corrugated steel sheets extended one section of the building and poured concrete floors and retaining walls. I started having issues here and there with getting overheated during the day, heat stroke, and while I was living there, I had not actually moved yet, so ended up taking a week to put most of our things in storage. We were literally living at the building in an RV I had to keep the building secure. When I got back, Steve started complaining that the power for the building was $100 and blamed it on me running an air conditioner. We had been running a 220 welder on average 4 hours a day, 5 days a week, but it had to be that AC unit and basically said there was no way I could keep an eye on things if it was running because I couldn't hear anything. It had been over a month straight with highs over 100 degrees, but with another roof over my RV, it never got direct heat, so I called BS as my 2 bedroom apartment I just vacated only had electric costs around 120 per month and it was all electric with a lot more items using power including my aquarium. A question was then made about what I thought I was worth. I figured $10 per hour. I dealt with a lot including maintenance on all the machinery and his vehicle and never charged for fuel or mileage when I would drive my own vehicle to do things. For as long as I worked for the guy, I always had to bid my jobs outside of maintenance work. I was only receiving a flat amount of money each month for the work in the building and my wife received nothing for keeping an eye out, which she did pretty well since I actually caught someone in the building with her seeing them. Steve stated that no one was worth $10 an hour to him. Other things were being thrown out as my fault too. 
Basically, Steve was under the gun on a couple of things, as when he bought the building, it was actually scheduled to be torn down, and another building across the road, which was also scheduled to be torn down, was bought slightly after he purchased his, yet it had already been completely rehabilitated and was opening up space for lease. The other building was smaller, but had quite a bit more to have done to it to get it up to code. The roof was completely gone, and the inside was so full of trash, it took nearly a month to clean it out. Steve kept changing things after something was done, and then turning around and changing them again, wasting more and more time. A lot of other things were going on as well, so I opted to be done and move on again this time with no option of going back. My wife's health had started going downhill anyway, so being blamed for petty crap wasn't worth it and I obviously was not wanted around anymore. Now here's the revenge. I had told him multiple times that there was an issue with his fire alarm panel not charging the batteries. The local fire department had been on him once before and forced more smoke detectors to be installed as a retrofit and a few other things. The smoke detectors were installed, but the battery charging issue was never fixed properly. Other things in the building had also started to fall into disrepair that I had told him needed to be dealt with. For instance, some very large windows were cracked and a few had pieces broken with tenants in them. It was a two-man job to fix the windows and Steve had too many irons in the fire. He had sunk over 500k into the new building and couldn't afford to have someone else do the work and didn't think it was worthwhile, so he kept putting it off. I went ahead and contacted the city about issues that needed to be addressed as well as dropped some complaints about things. I used multiple email addresses from accounts I set up for exactly that purpose so it would never track back to me and contacted multiple members of the city council as well as the fire chief slash marshal. I never contacted Steve again, but the last time I was there, the apartment building was shut down with signs stating that it could not be occupied. Since the fire alarm panel had been written up on once before due to issues and he had been told that if it became a problem again, a sprinkler system would be required to bring the building up to code with it acting up again, the fire marshal shut it down. The new building is now off the demolition list, but it once again sits empty as there is likely not enough money left to pull from the apartment building to make it complete. You see, being off the list only required it to be warehouse grade which is basic lighting, emergency lighting, mostly airtight, with egress and fire systems. Once that was done, more work would be needed to actually start using the structure for office space and things of that nature. Going from 100 apartments to 23 with a few rent houses that needed work likely took the last little bit of money he had free to do things. The apartment building was truly unsafe, as if the power went out, the fire alarm panel would not function, and with a tall building, a fire on the lower floor would be bad. All he had to do was to fix it so the batteries were charged and would stay that way and pay someone to work on the panel if it was acting up. But then again, no one was worth $10 an hour. Why would he pay someone who was going to make even more than that? I felt bad for most of the people who lived there since they lost their home, but I would have felt worse if they were hurt or worse in a fire. The one thing I wish I had seen was the stepdaughter and her husband's faces while they had to move. They were on the top floor as well as Steve's and his wife face when the building was basically condemned. But I still go back and look at the news article showing it was all shut down and have a little smile. It just doesn't pay to be a jerk when someone has tried to help you out. Am I the jerk for not helping a single mom? So, one of the women in my friend circle, Jane, who's 24, whom I, whom 26, female, don't know well, gave birth a couple of months ago. She doesn't have a job and her parents refused to help her because she cheated on her boyfriend of three years for six months before her pregnancy. She then got pregnant and the side guy broke it off, sending her ex-boyfriend proof of what was going on. When her boyfriend found out, he lost it and decided he didn't want anything to do with the kid. He works as a cashier, so he can't pay much child support. Jane decided to keep the kid and asked her friends to pitch in to help her pay for expenses and rent. After her son's birth, Jane decided that her current studio apartment, which we have been paying for, wasn't good enough for her. She needed a better place because it was too small. All our friends looked at me expectantly as I live alone in a large three-bedroom apartment and am the only one in our group with a stable and well-paying job. I gave in and let her live with me under the condition that she would take care of her son and do some of the chores, washing her own dishes, doing their laundry, etc. The last two months have been heck for me. She whines if I ask her to do anything and even called me selfish and mean because I, at first, refused to take care of her kid, who she is being paid to take care of. She forced me to take three leaves because she wanted to go out. This Monday, I woke up to get to work 
and found her gone with a note on my fridge on how she needed a break and wouldn't be back till late. I called her and texted her, telling her that I couldn't take leave or find a babysitter on such short notice. I decided to work from home and take care of the baby while she celebrated about starting a new chapter of her life. When she came back, I placed her son in her arms and gave her a month's notice, telling her to go find a new setting for her new chapter. She started crying and begged me to reconsider. I told her I was tired of being her bank account and that if she wasn't ready to take care of her own kid, then she shouldn't have had one in the first place. I woke up to angry texts from our friends the next day. Jane has been guilt tripping me since Tuesday. She's been complaining to friends and posting on social media about how some people don't understand single mother struggles. She said she deserved all my money and would sue me for it. I said good luck and told her I would stop paying for her necessities if she kept acting like this. That shut her up for now. I feel like I did the right thing, but I also think that I picked the worst time for this because of everything going on. Am I the jerk? As a kid, I was neglected by my parents and wasn't even close enough to them to talk to them about the weather. I didn't want Jane's son to have a bad parent because I know what it's like, so I tried to help and maybe get Jane to realize that her son is the one person closest to her right now and she should take care of him. About our friend group, they've not listened to me at all and asked me if I really expected a new mother to work. I really don't know what's going on in their heads. They said that as I had the resources to take care of them, it was my duty to. They haven't helped with Jane's bills since she moved in. Her baby's father is minimum wage. She won't reveal to me exactly how much she gets, she just said it wasn't enough to foot her own grocery bill. Pretty sure that isn't true. Well, what do you think? Do you agree with OP or with Jane? Please let us know. Sounds to me like OP needs to find some new friends and kick Jane out. You're physically incapable of leaving the store? I work at a small store on a college campus. We're right across the street from the school's bookstore and are technically a branch of it. Every semester, the bookstore hosts a poster sale outside in a tent. It's completely leased out to a company and all transactions are done through them. I couldn't honestly tell you what we get out of it, but it's not sales. School started this week for us, and despite everything going on right now, we're all going ahead with mostly in-person classes. Still, we've had a lot of phone calls instead of in-person sales, and I'm always grateful to the people who do them since it benefits both of us. Today I got a call from someone a bit different. Caller. Hey, I just spoke with your staff about the details of the poster sale, and I was just calling back to see if you could tell me the price of the posters. Me. I'm so sorry, but I don't actually know. It's not actually under our division. We just know the dates and times because of the flyers they asked us to hand out. Caller. Well, could you go check for me? Me. I'm sorry, but they don't have a website, and all the posters are different sizes and prices anyway. I can transfer you to the bookstore, and someone might be able to help you over there. Caller. Well, can't you just go across the street and check for me? It's literally right there. Me, incredibly short-staffed and already having a terrible day. I'm sorry, sir. I can't leave the store. What do you mean? It's literally right across the street. It'll just take a second. Me, completely taken aback that this man, who isn't even a customer, is asking me to literally exit my store to tell him the prices from another retailer. Sir, I'm clocked in over here. I'm sorry. I can't leave the store. You literally can't leave the store? Like you're physically incapable of leaving the store? Me, completely done with the day at 11 a.m. Yes, that's correct. Caller. Wow, great customer service. Thanks. At this point, I said thank you, and he told me to have a nice day. I attempted to return the sentiment, but alas, my new friend hung up on me. And just when he was learning the boundaries of my workplace prison, maybe one day I will escape the physical entrapment of my store. Edit. I'd just like to add that this poster sale is done entirely in person. They don't ship or hold anything or do orders over the phone as they don't have a phone. He would have to go inside the tent no matter what. Would I be the jerk if I make my fiance choose between me or living with a joint family? So for context, I am Indian. A joint family, that is a couple living with the male partner's parents and possibly other relatives, is the norm. Living with your husband's parents after marriage is usually what most women do and it is not at all frowned upon. I met my fiance in college when I was 20. We were friends and started dating. When we got serious, around the seven month mark, I made my views on the whole joint family system clear. I absolutely hate it and would never want to live with my husband's parents. Extended family is out of the question. He assured me that he would take up employment in Bangalore, where our university is, and not move back to Panthakot, 
his hometown, to live with his family. He claimed he too did not like the whole idea. I value my privacy and space a lot. I, in fact, don't even like to live with my own parents. When we turned 23 and graduated, we moved in together and have been living together in Bangalore for four years. He proposed a few weeks ago and I said yes. I need to add that both of us are advocates, attorneys, and each state has a separate bar exam. We are both bar members in Bangalore, not in Panthakot. Yesterday, he asked me how I would be studying for the Punjab bar exam. I was perplexed. He nonchalantly stated that to live with him and his parents and extended relatives, we would move to Punjab. If I wanted to continue working, I would have to take up the bar. I saw red. I had been very clear about this at the very beginning. We had a few similar discussions at the two-year mark and five-year mark. Now, he says, they are very open. You can do what you want. We are not conservative. That is BS. No matter how open, I won't have the same freedom and independence I have now. My finances would be pooled into the joint family fund and there would be restrictions. I have spent five years studying law and four years practicing in court to earn where I am. I can't just leave him. We've been together for seven years and have an otherwise good relationship. I want to give him an ultimatum. It is me or the joint family, to be clear, living with them. I want him to have a relationship with his family and I want to have a relationship with them as well, but not by living together. I'm now being accused of distancing a mother from her son by a few angry calls from his whole clan. Would I be the jerk if I gave him this ultimatum? Edit. Thank you for all your responses. It makes me feel that my views and opinions are valid and I have every right to decide what to do. This really means a lot since the closest people in my life couldn't, or rather wouldn't, understand where I'm coming from. You all really gave me strength. The Parmesan Cheese Incident This story happened a few years ago when I worked for a supermarket chain that promotes organic food. I was hired to be the buyer for the specialty foods department, but I soon came to realize that they expected me to do the work of someone with a higher title for less pay. Our team was always short-staffed, and the few other workers always had excuses for doing less work, so it all got dumped on me. On this particular day, I was short-staffed and by myself from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. The store assistant manager wandered up and announced, You need my help. You need more Parmesan cheese out. I'll cut it. Now, first of all, while assistant manager was a generally nice guy, he was the sort of inept person that made you wonder how the heck he made his way up to his position. He may have been good at customer service, but he had no skills whatsoever to help out in my department. He had tried helping in the past and had made a mess of things, so I learned my lesson there. The cheese in question is specifically known as Parmigiano Reggiano. A full wheel is about 85 pounds. Anyone who works in the specialty cheese industry knows that you need a special set of tools to cut it, as well as the skills needed. It's not a job for the novice. A new person must be trained, helped, and monitored. Also, a second person comes in handy to help flip an 85-pound wheel of cheese. I came to this job with years of experience, and I made a point to tell them during my interview that I cannot do this one job due to my arthritis. No problem, I was told. Other team members can do it. So I explained to assistant manager that I had another coworker coming in at 2 p.m. who was going to do it because he knew how to do it and was good at it. Assistant manager still wanted to do it. I tried explaining that you need to use special tools to cut it and special training, and I didn't have time to stop and show him how to do it. I'll figure it out, assistant manager said. I tried asking him to do a number of different, easier tasks to help me out instead. No, I can cut the parm, he said. I tried every diplomatic way to politely dissuade him from doing this, but he insisted on doing it. I was overdue for my break anyway, so I told myself to just let this happen. I returned from my break to see what had happened. An entire 85-pound wheel of expensive cheese was absolutely butchered. It was done with maximal waste, and each individual piece was wrapped up for sale in a way that would be unacceptable by the company's standards. I shrugged my shoulders. It wasn't my mess, and I had my own job to do, orders to place, and time deadlines to place them. The next day I show up, and am immediately attacked by the department team leader. I calmly explained what happened, and she still wanted to blame me for it. She asked why I didn't take the time to train assistant manager. I pointed out that I didn't have the time, being short-staffed. She asked why I didn't take the time to rewrap, clean up, and fix all the cheese. I pointed out how long that would take and that I would get in trouble for working overtime. She insisted that she and I needed to have a meeting with the store manager immediately. So after talking it out and pleading my case in the store manager's office, the store manager graciously gave me permission 
to nicely and directly tell inexperienced supervisors to go away and not help in the future. My team leader later pulled me aside and apologized to me, but then she gave me a big condescending lecture about how I just wasn't doing a good enough job, and if I didn't get better, I may get demoted or fired. Not long after that, I gave my notice to work a new job at a lovely, privately owned cheese shop where I was much happier and my skills were truly appreciated. Take care of my kids or get out. I moved in with a girl entitled Mom in October of last year. She had four sons. We moved into a new home together due to her being kicked out of her other place. We both needed a home but couldn't afford one alone, so we agreed to become roommates. We worked together and thought it would be a good idea. The agreement was half and half. The place was a really big house, honestly. Two-story, five bedrooms, but super cheap. During November, the weather was still pretty warm, not too cold, at least to me anyways. I worked two jobs during this time and one was third shift, so I stayed in my room anytime I was home kept my vent closed so no heat would go in. Leading up to the incident, we kept getting into disagreements about the heat. Entitled Mom would set the heat on 90 and it would be an oven in the house. I hated it because when I was home, I couldn't breathe. But for the most part, I wasn't there due to work. Her kids would also leave all the lights on, so bills were getting ridiculous and I had to pay half. Then my boyfriend moved in, so bills got split in three. Now, me and my boyfriend are paying two thirds of the bills when we're rarely home and when we are, we're sleeping. But I didn't say anything for a while because I agreed to this. I couldn't find anywhere else to live, so this was life. Then comes the end of December. My main job was cleaning machines in factories. So when everyone else goes on two week break at the end of December, United States, I work 12 hour days for 16 days straight, including Christmas Eve and eight hours on Christmas night. Three days before Christmas Eve, Entitled Mom texts me telling me she needs me to babysit her four kids because she has to work. I have babysat a couple times for her and it was awful. I told her I couldn't because I had to work. She told me to call in because if she does, she will lose her job. Fast food. I told her I couldn't because I would lose mine and if I did, I wouldn't be able to pay bills or survive at all. She sent me several messages telling me that she would just leave them home and I could sleep till she gets home. She would be home before I had to leave for work. She has said this before and I didn't get any sleep and couldn't go to work because she didn't get home until hours after I was supposed to be clocked in. I told her no. She knows her kids don't let me sleep and I can't miss any more time due to the last time I had to miss because of babysitting. She got mad and stopped replying. I thought this was the end of it until I got a threatening message from her girlfriend in prison telling me I need to pull my weight and do my part. How dare you do this to entitled mom when she has done everything for you? was a part of the message. She did nothing but agree to be a roommate. We got this house together. I texted Entitled Mom and told her it was BS. She was saying I wasn't doing anything to help when me and my boyfriend pay two thirds of the expensive bills when we don't use 90% of the bills. She told me that I needed to watch her kids or I could leave. Rent was due a week later and she had blown all her money and child support on these super expensive toys. Went broke the day after Christmas. So I decided instead of paying her rent, I would find something else. So I moved out exactly 29 days later, paid absolutely no bills during that time and refused to help her with laundry or cleaning after her kids anymore. She told everyone that I didn't help her, but the truth is I had spent every day after one job and before my other putting the house together after we moved in. She lost a true friend because she was selfish and entitled. Watch this video next, you will love it. And huge shout out to Rainbow Cookie, our newest official channel member. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Join as a channel member today and we'll give you a special shout out in our next video. And to have us make any kind of video you'd like us to, come visit us on Fiverr. Link pinned in the comments below.